वेलकम टू पार्ट टू ऑफ एनालिसिस फंडामेंटल एनालिसिस ऑफ अवंती फीड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लुक एट द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट प्योर ग्रुप कंपैरिजन टेक्निकल चार्ट एज वेल एज इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू कैलकुलेटर फर्स्ट विल बिगिन विद द कंसोलिडेटेड कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट एंड विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट all these values are in uh, lakhs of indian rupees so what i'll do is i'll convert it into crores and uh, we will uh, refer to all of these values in crores let's begin by cash by looking at the cash flow from operating activities the profit declared before tax was around <coughs> the profit uh, declared before tax was 484 crores in march by at the end of march 2020 and 428 crores in 2019 so this is the starting point from where we will start looking at what was the profit declared before taxes in march 20 which is 484 crores and then we will deduct out all non operating incomes any income which is not of operating nature will remove it out of the profit before tax and then we will arrive at how much cash it earned actually through the operating activity so first of all we'll have to remove out all items from the profit which are of non operating nature and we have to add back those expenses which were removed from the profit before tax but which were of operating nature so as we proceed ahead we'll understand that so from 484 crores depreciation expenses which was deducted and because of which the profit before tax was reduced that gets added back which is approximately around 37 crores so 37 crores of depreciation was added back to the profit before tax because this is of non cash nature this expense any any expenses which is of non cash item will be added back since not, no cash is going out of the business therefore the cash increases although the profit had been decreased by removing out the depreciation expenses but when we want to calculate again the amount of cash coming or flowing through the operating activity we need to add that non cash item or expense so 37 crores added back finance cost was also added back 1.9 crores it comes under the nature of operating activity and therefore uh, added back 1.9 crores the company also had losses on sale of property plant and equipment this is also of operating nature and therefore added back rather this loss on sale of property plant and equipment was of non cash nature meaning this was an adjustment although the company had suffered losses on sale that no cash went out of that loss it was a notional loss so 1.95 crores uh, 1.9 crores uh, of loss uh, added back because nothing went out of the business in terms of cash company had earned an interest income now interest income is not of operating nature it's the interest income comes through other activities like in doing investments so interest income has to be removed out of the profit before tax to understand how much cash actually is flowing from the operating activities that's a 9.8 crores of interest income dividend income is also will have to be removed the company also received dividend in 2020 of around 23 crores again this is not of the operating nature this income is not of the operating nature so we will have to remove this out also there was a uh, exchange gain uh foreign exchange gain of around 16 crores but since this was not of operating nature it has to be removed out there was also a gain from sale of financial assets of around 9 crores so that also is removed out so many of these profits whatever profit the company is showing 
would include lot of uh, items of non operating nature meaning those that profit does not in, or would include uh, profits from the normal course of business as well as from other activities so when uh, when we want to actually understand how much money the company has received through its operating activity because that is what is very stable whereas the money received through other activities like investments or foreign exchange or uh, sale of property plant equipment and any kind of profits coming from that just adds up into the profit and we and we want to segregate these two we want to separate them and then understand separately how much profit has actually come or flown through the operating activity of the business and when we are investing we are investing because the company is in a certain business and whether it is earning money from that business or not that is very important to see and how much money it is receiving separately from other activity also so cash flow statement will segregate these two things from the profit before tax so that we can clearly understand how much money has come from operating nature and how much money has come from investing nature or from other sources similarly the company had uh, okay we already checked the fair valuation of financial assets there was a gain of uh, 15 crores on financial assets again in derivatives uh, contracts they have uh, suffered a loss and that was around 10 crores so that gets added back not again uh, in a normal course of business this this activity is also in a not in a normal course of business company had suffered losses from one of its associates of around 41 lakhs a small amount so we can ignore that but it it was a loss rather uh, yeah this was a loss and uh, therefore it is removed out company deducted amortization from the government grant it had received so 1.9 crores removed out company had shown provisions for employee benefits of around 2.9 crores as an expense in the pnl account and therefore not of operating nature expenses are not of operating nature and therefore added back to 2.9 crores here so the total operating profit before further working capital changes was around 462 crores earlier we saw that the pbt declared was 484 and after few adjustments the pbt or uh, cash from operating nature was around 462 crores further on we'll have to do some adjustments of the working capital changes so there were trade receivables which were not received the company showed a sales but against that 40 crores has not come in through debtors so that is reduced in the sales during calculation of profit in the sales it had shown 40 crores which were not received generally businesses uh, if they are doing sales they will show it up front whether they receive it or not and then the later adjustments are done so when you come back to cash flow statement this very clearly shows you that 40 crores out of its sales was not received so it is deducted out to understand actually how much cash has come into the business in that year of 2020 company paid out some loan of around 24 lakhs a small, no, small amount so we can ignore that in fact we'll ignore all very small values below 1 crore company has spent on inventories of almost 164 crores this is a huge sum compare that to its previous year where in fact it had sold inventory and received money of 145 crores in 2020 it has invested additional 164 crores in its inventory which would then signify that the company seems to believe that it has orders and therefore needs to stock up its inventory or increase its inventory to around 164 crores so out of this 462 crores 164 went into inventory holding additional inventory holding bank balance reduced by around 53 crores in the previous year 121 crores was reduced from its bank balance other assets also decreased by around 8 crores 
maybe they have sold off those assets or uh, there was a loss and therefore 8 crores of assets gone out or they have developed more assets of around 8 crores other assets in the previous year it was around 13 crores these was the asset side adjustments in working capital now we'll look at the uh, liability side working capital that is the current liabilities company had shown expenses but had not paid around 37 crores to its creditors or from whom they had purchased uh, material so that 37 crores gets added back because they had not paid this value to the uh, to its customer to its uh, suppliers and therefore we add back these 37 crores to understand how much cash is still there intact in the, into the business in 2020 in the previous year if you see 106 crores they had paid off to its uh, suppliers uh, and therefore it is deducted from the cash flow statement company has made provisions of around 2.8 crores other financial liabilities they have paid off around 1.7 crores other liabilities have uh, in fact uh, increased and they have received around 2 points in fact they have shown expenses in the PL account and in terms of other liabilities but they were not paid off in terms of cash and therefore ad gets added back by around 2.7 crores so the total cash generated from operations or operating nature was 231 crores compared to the profit which the company declared earlier of 484 crores company has actually received only 125 crores in terms of operating nature now uh, 231 crores uh, in terms of operating nature and tax was deducted of 106 crores so the company paid a tax of 106 crores in the previous year it paid 146 crores actually uh, we can also look at how much tax it paid in the PL account what it showed and how much it actually paid so it paid around 106 crores in 2020 on its total cash generated from operations of 231 crores that is on the pbt of 438 cro 484 crores it paid a tax of 106 crores or we can also see that say that it's on its cash generated from operations of 231 crores it has paid 106 crores now the net cash that was generated from the actual operating activity was just 125 crores and not 484 crores as the company showed uh, in its profit before tax so this profit before tax has quite a substantial amount of other unrelated items uh, in terms of income from other sources so 125 crores generally what i would like to see is that whatever company is showing in pbt either the net cash flow from operating activity has to be equal to that or more than that which would then signify that most of its incomes it is generating is from the operating activity and not from other sources in the previous year also if you look ending march 2019 428 crores of profits before tax declared and 183 crores in terms of operating activity so uh, when we will analyze when we in fact when we analyze the financial statement earlier in the part one uh, balance when we analyze the profit and loss account and the ratios there we had seen that uh, it is generally receiving less cash than what it is declaring as profit net profit or even profit before tax both ways so we I, as I mentioned I would like to see higher operating activity cash flows coming in than the amount of profit the company is declaring so I am sure then that the company is not manipulating or what it is showing as profit is a genuine operating nature profits. Continuing on let us move on and look at its uh, investing activity. How the cash has flown, flown in or out from the investing activity. The company had invested around 34 crores in in, in its capital expenditure on fixed assets in developing its fixed assets in the previous it was year it was around 25 crores company also received it's a small amount 73 lakhs by sale of property plant and equipment changes in investments 
25 crores additional was spent in adding more inventory in, in adding in more investments this is net investments that is buying and selling some companies give in both the details of how much investments they have purchased and how much investments they have sold so here they have given only net net of the purchase minus sales or sales minus purchase how much it sold sell uh, sold in the uh, entire year and how much additional it purchased so additional 25 crores was uh, spent uh, in adding more investments in the previous year it was around 23 crores company has received interest this is of investing act, uh, nature of around 9.8 crores dividend income received was around 23 crores so earlier we had seen when we were analyzing the cash flow from operating activity there we had deducted the dividend income interest received income and that those incomes are of inv uh, those are of uh, investing nature and therefore we add it here back again to understand how much cash was actually used or flown out in the investing activity so around 25 crores additional went out in the investing activities in the previous year it was around 26 crores next we'll look at the cash flow from financing activity so the finance cost that is whatever debt it took on that it paid around 1.9 crores so deducted repayment of borrowings whatever borrowings it had done out of that 7.56 crores it has paid back dividend the company has paid a very hefty div big dividend of 148 crores uh, in 2020 compared to around 99 crores in 2019 so company is big on dividend so that is why it is deducted out of finance and these are all of finance nature of finance uh, these are all of financing nature all these activities company has also received some profit on basically forward contracts uh, foreign ex exchange fluctuations and all of these things so around 16 crores of profit from there also so net net they have spent around 141 crore additional in the financing activity out of that a big chunk is the dividend itself paid of 148 crores to the shareholders company has uh, decreased its overall cash and cash equivalent from the balance sheet by around 42 crores net net so it had a whatever balance it had additional it has re uh, that cash has decreased by around 42 crores in the previous year the cash had increased by around 51 crores in the beginning of the year they had 58 crores and at the end of the year they have just 15 crores net it also has 15 crores balance in bank and around 29 lakhs in hand so around net net from financing activity it has spent out or rather it has received around 15 crores so this concludes the uh, analysis of the cash flow statement so we have understood now what kind of why the company is receiving less cash because of excess of uh, inventory or high inventory holding in 2020 against what it had in 2019 and there were other few things like the uh, payment to uh, uh, trade payables rather they had not paid here the bigger chunk was trade receivables of around 40 crores which were not received although shown as in sales as received we can also see that it had gained around 15 crores through uh, profit and uh, it had gained in a financial asset uh, revaluation 16 crores in exchange gains 23 crores as dividend income so all of these were removed out and therefore the cash flow from operating activity has reduced quite considerably next we'll look at the as of so as of now i don't see any problem with the cash flow statement although what i could understand is that the company is receiving a substantial portion of uh, its uh, income or whatever profit it is showing in the pnl account a major portion of that is also coming from other activities rather than from the operating activity so whenever if the uh, other activity suddenly there's a there's some issue with that like the company is not able to sustain because that's of very fluctuating nature and therefore if that reduces the overall profit before tax will also decrease along with it 
so we have to see how stable that other income is also so this concludes my analysis of the cash flow statement next let us look at the peer group comparison okay let's uh, start our analysis of uh, avanti feeds in peer group analysis with good godrej agrovet and apex frozen foods these companies are very similar but they also have different products so they are not strictly comparable but uh, godrej agrovet is in meat production avanti is also in that apex frozen food is also in that so they basically have a sector and they all the three of them come under the sector meat and packaging like frozen foods current market price for avanti is 526 godrej 529 and apex at 272 rupees avanti has fallen almost 31% from its 52 week that is almost in one year whatever highest point it had reached from there it has fallen 31% godrej has fallen the least at 11 and apex uh, at around 38% The results for all the three companies are up to date till latest quarter of June 2020. Let us look at sales latest quarter for all three companies. Avanti has done a sales of 955 crores, Godrej at 1154 crores and Apex at around 218 crores. So comparably Godrej is the uh, in terms of revenue generation or through sales it is the largest in this three and apex is the smallest one in the previous quarter it had done avanti had done a sales of 1000 crores and in the latest quarter that is june to june the sales or revenue has fallen to 955 crores godrej has also seen around 8.72% fall in its yoy sales growth avanti has seen around 12.63 and apex has then almost similar to what it had done in the previous year in terms of net profit although avanti's sales had dropped 12% its profit has increased by 12% so uh, in the one sense the overall revenue it has dropped but the profit has increased so that shows that the company has managed to increase its prices and maintain its margin in fact it improved better than what it was in its previous year's quarter Godrej has also done the similar thing where it has increased managed to increase its profits by 16% and Apex has increased by around 1.9%. So all the three companies although their revenues have dropped their profits have increased. If you look at the sales for long term that is for one year to the recent 12 months or the latest year of 2020 with the recent 12 months So in the recent 12 months what is happening is basically the last four quarters that is June of 2020 then March of 2020 then December of 2019 and sub September or October of 2019 basically October of 2019 all these four quarters are added up and seen how it is doing in the recent 12 months or recent four quarters against the sales of 2020 so the overall June 2020 sales had dropped so the ttm or 12 month sales has also dropped below 2020 sales for the whole year so 4115 crores to 3977 crores that's a 3.4% drop on the other hand godrej has increased by almost double from where it was in 2020 3494 crores and the revenue generated was 6800 crores by almost 95% jump so this needs to be investigated as to what has happened in godrej that it has managed to generate so much sales in just one quarter apex whole year sales have dropped slightly that is 12 months recent 12 months sales has dropped by around 0.4% a nominal drop almost similar to where it was in march 2020 in terms of profit of 2020 with the recent 12 months Avanti has seen a 5.4% gain in its overall profits as we earlier saw also in June quarter it had managed to increase its profit by almost 12%. But Godrej's profits although the revenue has doubled almost increased by 95% over 2020 its profit has dropped by 43%. So 
so if you are interested in godrej agrovet then you need to investigate separately as to why this variation well on one hand the sales for the entire 6 months has increased by 95% but on the other hand the profits are falling by 43% apex is almost similar to where it was in the recent uh, in 2020 next we'll compare the net profit and see how much cash has come in through operations as we when when i analyze the cash flow statement i showed what actually it means when we look at the cash flow statement so we see profit before tax and out of that profit before tax we are trying to understand we are segregate trying to segregate into two parts the profit before tax one is how much the company has received in that profit before tax how much profit is coming from the operating activity and how much profit is coming from the non operating activity that is investments sales foreign exchange gain and all of those things so we are trying to understand how much actual cash has come in from operations so avanti has seen a shortfall of 63% so whatever profit it has shown of 3 339 crores of that only 125 crores has come in through cash that is 63% has not come in terms of so basically the only 63% shortfall is there in cash so 47 rather 47 approximately percent has come in by way of operating activity and balance has come by way of non operating activity that is incomes from operating and non operating nature godrej has received a shortfall in its cash by 23% this is for one year or that is 2020s net profit and 2020s cash operations similarly apex frozen has also received a shortfall of 25% but as we understood as we were analyzing the avanti feeds cash flow statement separately we saw that a major portion of it is in the uh, in the nature of inventories uh, that it has collected so it shows that there is a growth or the company is expecting growth in the future and therefore has invested a substantial portion of its uh, profits before tax into this and therefore it has reduced Now let us look at few of the valuation ratios where their valuations stand as of today. In the last five and three years, the average price to earnings. Just let me know in the comment section if you would want me to explain all of these ratios in all of my videos because because every time I do that the video becomes very long. But if you would like me to explain in each and every video what it means briefly or maybe in a short manner. then i'll do that otherwise uh, from next video video onwards i may even skip it so price to earnings again valuation ratio how much price we are paying for the profit the company is earning on every share so we are paying 12 times more for avanti feed 29.7 times in the last 5 years for godrej agrovet very expensive and apex is trading at around 16 times it's quoting at around 16.9 times so compare that with the latest price earning what is it trading at So Avanti Feed is trading at 20 times, which is above its five and three years average. So if you want to buy into Avanti Feed, we'll need to let the uh, price drop or earning increase, price drop, that is price has to come down, or the profit per share has to go up, so that the price to earnings ratio therefore comes down between 15 to 12 times, and therefore we can. time our entry and buy in this particular range of long term averages of price to earnings but price to earnings as also to be seen with the profit growth which we will do in the pg ratio godrej agrovet is uh, currently trading at 31 times last 5 years it has been trading at around 29 times that is the price was 29 times more expensive than its profit per share and apex is quoting at around 14 times and its average is around 16 so it's quietly slightly below it's fallen below its averages of 16.9 times in terms of operating cash price to operating cash where the price is when we look at the operating cash flow earlier we saw with the profit now we are looking at with the operating cash flow so this is at 57 times again it should be below 25 times very expensive and therefore the companies which again signifies the company is not receiving cash which we have already seen godrej agrovet is also expensive at 42 times its cash flows 
Apex is at 18.7 times. Price to book value that is uh, uh, as far as equity is concerned and the entire market cap is concerned. The share of Avanti feed is quoting at 5.1 times its actual net worth which is expensive. I would want to buy it at around 2.5 or below that. Similarly Godrej is also quoting at around 5.5 times its net worth or shareholders equity which is expensive. We will need to look at the long term book value averages which I will be doing it from the next uh, video onwards. Uh, Apex is uh, quoting at around 2.2 times its book value. So this is reasonable but reasonable valuation does not mean it's a good company. So as we look at ROE, ROCE, ROA and other ratios of long term durations then we'll understand whether this valuations of 5.1 times 5.5 times its book is it justified. In terms of price to sales, the, where is the market cap and how much sales it is doing every year? Avanti's total market value is uh, for the entire company is around 1.8 times its sales of 2020. Godrej is quoting at around 1.5 times. So all three are quoting at a reasonable valuation as far as sales is concerned. But as far as book value is concerned, it is quite high. Or uh, as far as the uh, equity or net worth is concerned, it is quite high. Even in comparison to operating cash also it seems to be very high. Enterprise to EBITDA is quoting at around 13 times. Enterprise value is all the debt, less cash and uh, so on. So the combination of that is the enterprise value and against that how much EBITDA it is earning. So Avantifeed is quoting at around 13 times its EBITDA. 18 times for Godrej Acrovet against its EBITDA and 9 times. So the lower the better. So we are buying at a reasonable valuation. That is what it means. In terms of PG, it should be below 1.5 for both 5 and 3 years. Basically PG is price to earnings ratio. Comparing that with the profit growth of last 5 years and profit growth of last 3 years. So Avanti Feeds is quoting at a good PG of uh, below 1.5. Many uh, investors would want to see it b to buy below one times. Godrej is slightly expensive. Basically, its price earning is very high and it doesn't have that high profit growth rate. So we can see that it was quoting at around 30 or 40 times its uh, earnings and that earnings was growing at only 11.6% in the last five years and 13.3% and therefore the PEG. So PEG what you do is you divide the price earning by the profit growth rate of last 5 years. So we get 2.7. So this is expensive. Uh, 2.4 is also expensive. So we need to wait for Godrej Acrobat's PE to come down or the profit growth rate to go up. Either way so that the PEG comes down below 1.5. Apex is quoting at a good uh, PEG of 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. Any of these ratios you don't understand, just let me know in the comment section and I'll try to make a detailed video on that particular ratio if uh, many people comment regarding that one particular ratio. Okay, so net profit is done. Uh, Avanti Feed is growing its profits in the last 5 years at 24% and in the last 3 years at 16.5%. My benchmark is that the sales or, or rather the net profit has to grow at 10%. Sales also has to grow at about 10% every year. So that is a good growth rate for companies uh, that we should uh, invest in. Because anything below that means that the company's sales are not picking up or is not very strong or the demand for the product of the company is not very strong. So Godrej and Avanti both have, in fact all the three have a high profit growth rates of a double digit for both last five and three years. Anything like uh, for Apex frozen food where the profits are growing at 27 and 34 percent that needs to be investigated. Even this 24 percent we, we have to see from what base it is starting and not take it at the face value just because it's 24 percent or just because it's 27 or 34 percent. We have to look at how that sales has been growing. If for example, if in last 5 years if you are taking net profit growth rate, 
then five years back what was the profit had it fallen down uh, five years back and then it has picked up what is it so that we need to investigate separately in terms of sales growth both uh, Godrej and Avanti have shown a double digit almost about 10 percent of growth rate in their revenue or revenue generation over five and three years period apex has shown a low sales growth of six 0.7 in the last five years and 5.8 in the last three years last total five years operating cash has how the operating cash has grown that also needs to be seen along with how the profit is growing so this should be in positive again so seven percent for avanti feed godrej is growing its operating cash flows at 17 percent and apex at the highest at around 39.1 percent Return on equity is 26% in the latest uh, 2020 quarter, uh, year, which is uh, very good. 18% for Godrej Acrobat and 16% for Apex. All three companies are doing good in terms of ROE, above 15%, which is my benchmark. If you look at the long term averages of ROE for all the three companies, Avanti Feed has dr uh, dr uh, returned uh, lower than what it was giving in the la or what it was earning in the last five and three years of 34 and 32 percent so therefore definitely there is some pressure here in 2020 in fact godrej agrovet has also come down very near to its averages of the last five and three years apex has also fallen below its uh, so all the three companies have seen pressure on their margins as far as return on equity is concerned this is an important ratio so we are what we are trying to understand is as the company grows in terms of its net worth every year how much more it is generating on that net worth next return on capital employed avanti feeds capital employed and the ebit it is earning ebit on that is quite high at around 36% way above what Godrej and Apex Food is earning. There is a difference in their business lines also. So that needs to be considered. So we're not doing an exact like to like comparison because that would never be possible because all of these three companies have a, a one or two similar products and different products as well. So we have to keep that in mind. So just because return on capital employed is very high does not mean that Godrej Agrovet is not good. ROE or rather return on capital employed uh, is 36 percent but way below its five and what it was earning in the last five and three years. All the three companies have seen a similar drop in their ROC as also Godrej Agrovet has dropped below 20 percent which is its, uh, which was its average of the last five and three years and Apex has also seen a drop uh, below its average of the last five years and three years. Moving on, return on assets that is total balance sheet size is good at 22% for Avanti Feeds, 11% for Godrej and Apex at 13. So all of these three are quoting above double digit, uh, more than 10% uh, of ROA, which is a good value. So all these three companies are doing well. Even last five years average, if you see 32%, it was earning on its assets or balance sheet. Godrej 10% and Apex 16%. So all of these three companies have seen pressure on ROA, ROCE, ROE because overall profits and EBIT have dropped against in 2020 basically. Next we'll look at how much asset turnover was there. That is against the asset holding. What was the sales done by the company? So this is 2.9 times. 2.8 times for Godrej and 1.5 times for Apex. Basically, what they are doing is their sales is almost 2.9 times higher than the assets employed into the business. So this signifies basically that how efficient the company is managing to do sales against the assets it is it has uh, purchased or invested into the company, and that sh that shows efficiency. The higher the number, the better it is. In terms of similar for the inventory, how much was the inventory and against that what was the sales? 
so the lower uh, higher the number the better it is because we are seeing that uh, the company is doing more and more sales against the inventory holding so 7.2 times for avanti that is whatever was its inventory for 2020 against that its sales is almost 7.2 times higher than its inventory holding godrej acrobat 6.2 times higher than its inventory sales is higher than the inventory holding and apex at around 4 times we don't have the data for the inventory holding 3 years back so we'll skip that let's look at the total profit earned in the last 5 years against that what was the cash from operating activity in the last 5 years so that we can see if there is any shortfall in the see so so what i have done is first i had seen for one year how much profit it has earned in 2020 and how much cash it is generating in 2020 of operating nature then we will also look at the long 5 year of profits and how much cash it is earning so in one year of 2020 there could be a drop of 65% in terms of cash from operations but over long term it should not be that substantial so then that gives us confidence that one or two years let's say the company's inventory holding is very high in 2020 therefore it has spent a lot of money but in the next year maybe it will receive back it will sell off that inventory and it will receive cash so that's okay so long term it should be good so net profit in the last 5 years for avanti feed was 1400 crores this is the profit it has earned in total over the last 5 years godrej has earned 1160 crores and apex has 245 crores so quite small a uh, very small company compared to avanti and godrej in terms of operating cash earned was 990 crores which is a shortfall of 30% but godrej has earned higher cash than what profit it is showing so this gives me confidence in godrej agrovet that whatever pbt it is showing it is receiving that and more than that apex has also seen a similar shortfall in its cash by 27% generally as i mentioned i want to see a higher cash flows than the profit declared so that i am confident that most of the profits is coming from the operating activity because of which we are investing first of all in that company next we'll compare uh, how much operating cash it has earned in the 5 years and out of that how much is still free left with it in the last 5 years and the balance would be invested in the investing activity purchase of fixed assets and so on so 990 crores of cash earned in 5 years 694 still left with the company so that is only 29.8% spent in uh investing activity like purchase of fixed assets godrej acrobat has spent almost 50% of its operating cash into uh, sorry 50% it has and 50% it has spent in purchase of investments apex here has seen a slight problem here where its operating cash over the last 5 years was 179 crores but it has spent entire cash in buying assets over and above that it has spent additional 68 crores so there is a negative free cash here of 68 crores means it has spent more than what cash it has earned in the operations of the business in the last 5 years and that would only be possible if the company has increased its debt that is increase its borrowings so i generally don't like to invest in companies which have no free cash or a negative free cash we can also look at the last 7 years operating cash and free cash so that gives us a good idea as to how the company is doing over last 7 year period there could be some variation in the data because this data has been sourced from screener.in so you will need to check for the correctness of it but most of it i have tried and re-verified that it's correct operating cash last 5 years 1134 crores 787 still left with the company in the last 7 years that's 30% spent uh, uh, 30% spent in buying of fixed assets godrej 55% spent in fixed assets and 1068 still left free so out of this free cash it can uh, use it as paying dividend bonus and so on even in last 7 years the free cash is negative 75 crores 
so this gives me little uh, or no confidence in apex frozen although this would again signify if the company is investing heavily into fixed assets that means it's growing that is why it's in putting more and more into fixed assets but the problem comes is when i don't see a gradual investments i don't want haphazard investments by the company in the into their assets that is if they put in too much into their assets and that assets don't generate sales then that would uh, create a problem for the company because the company is uh, adding on more and more borrowings more and more debt and then it is not able to pay off so uh, i would not want to invest in apex because i don't see that kind of uh, stability or or uh, how the management is efficiently and gradually deploying what it is earning into the business a very high growth or fast growth is a basically no no for me until unless i see other ratios corresponding with it and uh, supporting that growth next we'll look at the operating profit margin last 5 years on average it should be about 15% but all the three companies are returning below that avanti at 13.6 godrej at 7.9 and apex at 9.3 so if the operating profit margin itself is so low then you cannot expect the net profit margin of the last 5 years to be above 10% which is my benchmark so therefore we see that uh, avanti feeds uh, op net npm margin that is net profit margin over the last 5 years has been at around 9% godrej is at around 5.2 and apex at around 5.7% so all of these companies npm is low below 10% let us look at the latest npm of 2020 8.4 for avanti in 2020 4.4 for godrej and 7.3 for apex so they are working on a low npm margins market capital market capitalization for avanti feed is 7177 godrej 10000 crores of market cap this is the value of the company in the market and 850 crores a very small company compared to avanti and godrej for apex in terms of net worth or the amount of shareholders money in the into the business which includes your reserves and surpluses or retained earnings avanti feed is uh, at around 1400 crores this is the shareholders contribution in the business godrej 1800 crores and 396 crores for apex frozen contingent liability is very minimal for all the three companies and uh, below 20% so we can see here 10.8% we don't want a very high contingent liability for any of these companies or any companies we invest in because these liabilities may or may not arise in the future but there is always a chance that something may pop up and these liabilities are not shown in the balance sheet so they can all of a sudden come up in the balance sheet and there could be a loss that the company may have to take because of those liabilities and once we are invested in the company then we can't do anything we cannot sell it off all of a sudden and most of us are reluctant to sell off when such a thing happens so uh, these companies are all within the comfort zone of less than 20% so their contingent liability should not exceed 20% of their net worth Avanti feed is almost debt free godrej is at 0.4 that is its debt is a uh, 0.4 times or 40% of its equity apex is also 40% of its equity it's not that high it should be below one times but their coverage is good above four times interest coverage that is they are uh, whatever ebit it is earning that is 9.6 times higher than its interest cost so they are all in a comfortable zone as far as the interest payment goes so these companies are able to easily pay off their interest since the avant since avanti feed is debt free there its uh, interest coverage ratio would be very high promoter holding for both godrej and apex is above 70% avanti feeds promoters are holding around 43% none of the promoters have pledged any of their shares we don't have any uh, change in promoter holding data fii's 17% in avanti feeds 3.5% in godrej and no holding in apex dii is 3% for avanti 2.3 for godrej and 6.5 in apex mutual funds holding 2.5 in avanti 
So there is a good uh, mixture of holding in Avanti feeds. DIIs are holding around 6.5 and mutual fund 6.4 in Apex. So we want a quite a diversified holding so that even if one particular institution sells off, it wouldn't affect the price of the stock. Although it would, but not that substantial where uh, if a major chunk was concentrated with one of the holders. Next, we'll look at the debtors to sales ratio and debtor days 2.2% that is the customers uh, that were pending to be collected for payment against the sales of 2020 was just 2.2% a very small figure it should not exceed 30% in fact all of these three companies are very efficient in collecting payment from their customers but Avanti is collecting within 8 days only and therefore their overall payment collection from its customers is very low at 2.2% Godrej is collecting within 45 days and Apex at around for 35 days. So the different companies have different policies in terms of credit days or how much time it gives its customers to pay the company back. We have to look at the uh, long term data over the years, how their policy has changed in terms of giving credit to its customers. Uh, if you see uh, a trend, upward trend, then that means the company has pressure on it to give uh, or supply its products to uh, the channel or the dealers or the retailers on credit because these companies are not able to buy or not or not able to buy or not buying so there is no demand so what it does is it pushes its product on credit and therefore that can be seen very clearly in this trend or the number of days so data days should not exceed 90 most of these companies are paying around one percent of dividend yield every year current ratio is comfortable for all the three companies highest for avanti feeds it will have no problem paying off its current liabilities or the liabilities it has to pay the money it has to pay in the current year against that it has assets 3.3 times higher Avanti feeds is 46% away from its 52 week highest point so it will have to move if it has to touch its 52 week highest point it will have to climb almost 46% but it has recovered almost 110% from its low. Godrej Agrovet is very near to its highest point of 52 weeks just 13% more up move to touch its 52 week high it recovered almost 99% from its low of the last 52 weeks. So you can see how much it has gained back uh, from its lowest point in the last one year. Apex has also uh, gained around 106% from its lowest point. So most of these companies have recovered but Avanti and Apex have to go up almost more than 45% to come back to its highest point. Last one year Avanti feeds has generated around 48% for its holders whereas in the last three years the prices have slightly dropped uh, by 8.5%. So uh, if you are buying today we will be buying at a price uh, which is 8.5% uh, lower than where it was three years back. But these uh, data needs to be verified uh, separately. One year return for Godrej Agrovet is positive 12.5%. So all of these three companies, even if you had bought one year back, you would still be in positive. But if you had bought three years back for Avanti and Apex, both would have given you a negative return. But from five years back, the Avanti, Avanti feed shareholders have compounded their share value by 22.1%. Let us look at the balance sheet size, how big the companies are. In terms of balance sheet, Godrej Agrovet 4672, Avanti at 1880 crores, and Apex at 627 crores. Company's debt position is highest for Godrej Agrovet at 642 crores. Three years back it was 664 crores, so slightly reduced from where it was three years back. So we saw debt to equity was around 
zero point four. So this is comfortable. It's not very high. Uh, debt for Apex has increased from one hundred and ten to one fifty nine crores, whereas Avanti has reduced its debt from nineteen to two crores from three years back. Gross fixed assets or the assets employed into the business by these companies signify what is the asset base or how much uh, capital intensive it is. So Godrej Agrovet has almost two thousand. Half of its balance sheet is in assets, two thousand six hundred and nineteen crores, three seventy eight crores for Avanti Feeds and one fifty one crores for Apex. So Godrej Agrovet is very capital intensive in terms of holding of fixed assets. Cash holding highest is with Avanti Feeds at almost two hundred crores, Godrej Agrovet at fifty one crores, and Apex Frozen Food at seven crores. So this doesn't signify much other than that. we don't want the companies to hold a huge cash uh, in their books because that just uh, instead they can invest or use it to pay off dividend or something like that in terms of capital work in progress building of new fixed assets avanti feeds is building around 26 crores of assets as of 2020 godrej at 153 crores additional assets so this will get added into the gross fixed assets once uh, it gets completed and apex also has only 3 crores so this basically signifies if there is any capital expenditure currently going on into the business so overall this concludes my analysis of peer group of avanti with godrej and apex frozen foods if you have any questions regarding the peer group comparison do let me know in the comment section next we'll move on and look at the technical chart Okay, let's do our uh, RSI analysis, relative strength index technical chart analysis. I have the data from 2015 onwards when the company was listed till uh, date, that is 17th September 2020. I have a weekly chart that is each bar on the screen represents one week. I have drawn these lines, horizontal lines, which are the support I feel. are the supports uh, that is where the price comes and halts and goes back up or the resistance where the price goes up stops and comes down again so this is this point at 729 or 730 is the resistance but yeah this is the resistance because it has come here and dropped back so this was a resistance now the support for me here is 401 I see that as a support. Then I see even 453 as a support because this is also a breakout in a way. From here, the price had shot up earlier, and even in uh, 2017, when the price had reached 453 on a closing basis, the price had shot up from here. And uh, if you look here also in November 19, the prices have shot up from here on to almost 729 rupees. and similar thing can happen again once the prices have gone up above 453 you can see a first resistance at around 729 so even if you're not able to buy down below at 453 401 320 263 263 and so on 263 was the lowest that reached in march 2020 but on a technical basis i would not even recommend buying at this price point also because rsi below 35 it had not reached in fact in the last 5 uh, years from 2015 onwards the price has never dipped single dip also has not happened meaning the red line has not gone below the line 30 and the green line so both of these line have just crossed below 35 once here in october 18 so we can expect or we can start buying when the rsi drops below 35 both the lines so it had happened in october 18 where it was 32 and 34 and the price in october 18 was around 365 this is to just to make you understand that how i would buy or based on rsi or based on intrinsic value or based on valuations fundamental valuations so we have different ways of trying to gauge where the price is and at what price point we can start buying or start entering i would also not recommend buying everything at one go break up your how you want to put your money into the market 
break it up put it downside put it upside break it up into 10 parts 15 parts doesn't matter your capital if you can do that if you have the time if you have the inclination and if you want to do that i generally would want you to break up your money into multiple parts put it at different levels so that you get a good average but mostly on the downside so when you're buying on a downside you have to look at good fundamental companies if you're buying downside in a bad fundamental companies then your money is doomed you will not be able to recover that you'll just keep on averaging and averaging this averaging method at the downside is only for good companies and not for not for not to so not sound uh, fundament if the company is not fundamentally sound or not good then i don't recommend a, i don't recommend averaging down at all this averaging method is only when you know the company's fundamental is good company has good sales good revenue good profits good cash flows generating good roe roc and so on uh, good data days good interest coverage and and all of these those things combining together for me to say a good fundamental company where i don't mind putting my money there i should always look for opportunity going down but if i have missed that opportunity then here i see an opportunity if on a closing basis closes above 568 it's at 526 as of today if it closes above 568 i see the price is going all the way to till 729 you can calculate the percentage how much percentage gain that is because i don't see any resistance whatsoever from here 568 rupees uh, it had uh, you can see from here 568 in december 19 it had shot up very quickly once it consolidated in this place in the earlier also that is in may 17 or july 17 here from here it had shot up very quickly upwards and from here it has fallen also very quickly if you can see here once it reaches goes up it comes back very quickly down below so if somebody is very intelligent and can gauge the movement of the stock price the pattern of the stock price how it moves in in uh, what duration it moves what is the cycle of that move then you can time your entry according to that also or you can time your entry according to technicals or fundamentals it doesn't matter until unless we buy at a good price it doesn't matter where uh, how we buy it we should buy at a good price points wait patiently don't rush into it most of the analyst and tv channels will tell you to buy at the highest point when the price has reached the highest point and that is because they have ulterior motives maybe they want you to go in and so that the big investors can get out by dumping that stock on you never buy i would never buy at the top and i'll never recommend you to buy at the top but most of these if you if you will observe when it reaches its highest point 52 week highest point or when it will reach 720 730 most of these tv channels will come and start telling you to buy into this stock so that they can dump it they can sell it to you and you will get stuck at the highest price points and then you will you will not have any other option but to keep holding on to it and one fine day you will get tired and uh, waiting three years four years and then finally you will think i'll just sell off sell it off doesn't matter i'm tired holding it so therefore buying at a low price and then holding for three four years you will not have any issues anyways this company if you have seen the amount of compounding it has done for the investors from five years back from three years back so three september 20 19 18 17 september 17 the price was somewhere around 620 you can see here and when we were doing the peer group analysis we saw that from three years back it has given a negative return but from five years back that is uh, 20 so 2015 approximately September 15 179 to 526 so it has given a positive return for the investors but if you had bought from three years back at 620 which was very high if you see even on RSI uh, September 16 was above a line 70 which are, which is a selling line not a buying line although the price kept moving up regardless of that but it you don't buy here when it the price when the RSI is going above 70 most of the people will start buying here and that's the problem but as far as this particular stock was concerned in this particular march 17 value it kept going up and up and up but then of course we don't know what is if you if you know how the company 
is performing what is going on in the company then you can hold on or alternatively when it reaches above 70 you don't need to sell off you can wait for the red line to cross below the green line and that is the time that you can start selling off so you don't need to rush into it here also when both of them went above 70 you can see here till it didn't cross below again uh, line 70 the red line didn't cross below the green line till that time you could have hold on and the moment it fell below the green line I, I'll just zoom it so that you can see here when uh, till the time it was above the red line was above the green line you can keep holding on and the moment the red line falls below the green line that is the time to be alert and exit the stock as far as possible so we can exit at the top and buy when the RSI line reaches below 35 both of them that or you can buy when one of them is 35 and one of them is below 30 so this this way you can use RSI this is how I use RSI I may be wrong but this is what I understood of RSI as far as my backdated testing is concerned or I have test I have basically worked on this RSI manually uh, for over hundreds of scripts uh, for almost 15 years of data I've done back testing manually in Excel and therefore what I've seen is this kind of patterns have emerged for me at least but for some for others they do generally don't want to buy when it is falling so they will they will wait when the RSI starts going above 50 so by that time you are already quite late but they don't want to see that down uh, pain what happens is when you're buying down there is a lot of pain because you keep seeing the prices falling and falling and falling and and therefore that gi uh, gives you no confidence uh, you think like if you're buying when the prices are falling of course you'll get it at lower and lower price but then many people are not made up for that they are not able to go through that pain of seeing their share price falling and falling 10 percent 20 percent after they buy 30 percent after they buy but then you have to average it the 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 technique here is to buy when the price is falling but also to buy at certain prices at certain points therefore making your average good so even if you start little early you can buy and average it at down below but if you don't average then that's a problem because then you'll be stuck at the higher value so always keep money don't put everything at one go break it up into multiple parts and then buy but as far as Avanti feeds is concerned I'll just zoom this currently it is at 56 and 54 the current RSI as of today September 17th 2020 so it's quite high for me I would want to it to wait uh, and buy below this but as I mentioned based on the support and resistance line if it does cross above 568 you can see no resistance whatsoever at least up till 730 now this has to be on a closing basis at the end of the week that is Friday any one week the price has to go above this 568 line and close above that then you will see an up move till 730 but that too is not short short but most of the time it works now, nothing is short short for that matter but it works this system works in a way the support and resistance line but if you don't want to take that risk you can wait for 453 401 or you can spread out your money into different levels whatever you think is the correct way either percentage wise either value wise you can decide on your own and do that so i'll just read out the uh, lines that you can think of buying on the upside if you want to take that risk you can go for 568 but not above that and down below 453 401 320 263 i don't think it will co uh, come down to 210 anytime soon but if you want you can keep a note of it and if it does come it's a good buying opportunity you can enter into the company so this is as far as a uh, technical chart is concerned based on rsi and support and resistance lines if you have more query regarding RSI let me know specifically what you want to know regarding RSI and then maybe I'll either put it into comment section or maybe in the next video I'll talk about that particular uh, question or query that you have 
Next, let us finally look at the intrinsic price calculation on fundamental basis. So let's look at the intrinsic price where we can expect the price to reach in uh, the very near future and where we can buy. So I have four targets, two for buying, two for selling at the top. 645 and 593 are the two target prices. Currently it is at 535 rupees. So from that would be around 10.8% gain and 20% maximum on the upside at 645 rupees from the current market price. And downside potential to buy is approximately 30% down more and 33% down more. And if you take an average of this, in fact the price has to come at least till 492. Currently it is at 535 before we can buy. So that's a negative 8.1% drop from the current price. It has to fall down to this level for us to start buying. So I would recommend not to buy right now. At least intrinsic price calculator is telling me that you have to buy at these three price points 492, 375 and 354. So once you buy this then you can expect a good return from your investments. Now many of you have asked me how I calculate intrinsic price. I have told you many times that I will not be able to disclose the the actual formulas or the system but what I can tell you is what is the basis of that calculation how I got these four prices or how I projected these four prices so what I've done is I have used four factors one is the growth all of them are growth one is growth in the equity shareholders net worth how that equity is growing over the last five years over the last three years and how is the cash flow from operating activity is growing over the last five and three years period how the net profit is growing over the last five and three years period and how the sales is growing over the last five and three years period so using these four different line items or objects I have projected the growth of these on the price I am actually showing telling you what the system is but I cannot show you here because of certain restrictions that I have but I am telling you what I am doing so if you can understand that and apply that to your own uh, excel sheet then maybe you will be able to come to the same uh, price projections that I have they may work they may not work these are very different from what I showed you in technicals so they have their own uh, pitfalls and their own advantages and disadvantages but this in short in in core that is what is happening this is how you can project the prices based on the past data of sales how the sales are growing and this growth rate I have projected over the price from five and three years back and therefore I've come to these levels of 645, 593, 375 and 354 and then 492 is of course the average of these four uh, target prices. So finally this concludes my long analysis of Avanti feeds in detail. If you have any questions, doubts, queries as usual put it into comment section. I'll try my best to answer them, resolve your query. See you in the next video of HDFC AMC. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like, you may subscribe. Thank you so much.